This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. I'm Marley Oxenholm from Pentester Academy TV, and welcome to our show, Access Point, where we spotlight cybersecurity companies and give an inside look at the people and technology behind the latest advancements in the industry. Today, I will be speaking with the company No Password. I'm sitting down right now with Bam Azizi, who is CTO of the company. Thank you for joining me today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I got a lot of great questions here from our tech team. So you ready to get started? Yes. Well, All right. Let's do this. So first question, can you describe in detail how your platform works exactly? Yeah, our main focus is providing uh, easy and secure multi-factor authentication mm -hmm. and enterprises as our customers using and leveraging our MFA to secure and manage their users' access to enterprise resources. And now on your website, you indicate that users no longer manually type in their credentials. How do you skip this step, and how exactly does that reduce the risk? In theory, the total immune, like ideal immune system, means that zero false positive and zero false negative. Okay. In practice, as of today, all the systems asking questions or to basically asking users to authenticate themselves every single time. Mm -hmm. uh, what we do instead, we do like one visible biometric authentication, and behind the scene we collect enough information from users um, to satisfy our multi-factor criteria. So as a result, we try to reduce number of times we bothering the user, but it doesn't mean it's a less secure system. We try mm -hmm. to reduce the risk by collecting enough information from users. And uh, can you describe a scenario in which your solution helped prevent an attack? So based on last year Verizon report, 85% of cyber attacks are based on stolen credentials. Um, and then um, our solution or approach is not asking users to type in any credential, right? So mm -hmm. you're no password. Right, exactly. <laughs> so um, and in, Behind the scene also, we are fighting against centralized database full of users' information. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that we do biometrics on the server side. Everything happens locally on users' smartphone. Um, so we help a lot in terms of uh, uh, reducing phishing and social engineering attacks. And um, that helps our customers to provide better security, yet very easy to use system. Also, for consumer-facing products like uh, mobile banking, you mm -hmm. and I are using every day. Right. Um, uh, we can help enterprises to provide uh, to prevent man-in-the-middle attacks okay. because we give more visibility to users. For instance, if there is a transaction going behind the scene, you get a push notification. You can see it. You can approve it uh, or decline it. Right. So um, that makes it easier for users and give more control to the users over what's happening behind the scene on their account. Very nice. I love the idea of giving more control to the yeah. users. I think that'd be huge. Yeah. Okay, and I'm curious, given that humans are error prone, do you think that there will ever come a time in which individual credentials will be completely secure? Yeah, that is a perfect, qu perfect question because that's exactly why um, we want every single enterprise or even experts in the industry mm -hmm. um, think again about um, how the authentication works. Um, so users, if you ask users to enter any credential or passwords, uh, it means that you need to, um, as you said, users are error prone, mm -hmm. they're human, so you need to train all of the users, it's impossible. So instead of that, we are trying to redefine the authentication mechanism by doing biometric authentication, and instead of asking users to provide any knowledge about themselves, we try to assert their identity by um, their biometrics or by the temper-proof evidences that the user can provide instead of the like knowledge like mm -hmm. passwords or PIN or token okay. they can provide to the system. And biometrics is what does that fall under? Like mouse movement? What else would that? So include? that would be behavioral, but biometrics means your face or fingerprint oh, or everything. voice authentication, those kind of things. Got it. Okay. And now, conventional two-factor authenticators are quite common, but your team says this strategy isn't sufficient. In your opinion, why not exactly? So, um, 
historically, if you wanted to make a system more secure, mm -hmm. for instance, your, your house or your bike, you try to add like extra locks or hurdles for intruders to break into the system. Right. But at the same time, you made it harder for yourself to get into the system as a legitimate That's user. That's a good point, right? yeah. So um, we don't believe that multi-factor authentication means bothering user multiple times. So what we do, as I said, we do biometric authentication once and we try even to decrease number of authentication attempts by the user and behind the scene collect enough information about you to um, basically authenticate you and hazard your identity. Um, also another problem about second factors is um, we don't see second factors as part of the solution. They are actually part of the problem hmm. because still they ask users to enter some sort of PIN or tokens. True, yeah. Um, so for instance, the text message you get, you get like six digit, you need to enter those digits somewhere. Right. Um, so those are not um, session aware or session sensitive. It means that anybody who has access to my text message um, uh, or has my password can use those credentials to log in from mm -hmm. another computers and another place. Um, we try to prevent those type of attacks. Okay, and so now, how do you make securing credentials easier for non-technical users? So, by definition, we are redefining the, um, um, uh, redesigning the authentication mechanism by changing the user's behavior from entering passwords or tokens to be themselves and just get authenticated by the biometrics. And we try to add other, um, like, um, technologies like behavioral authentication to mm -hmm. our platform um, and we're building that to make sure that after even we authenticate you, you're the right person to continue um, basically your session and mm -hmm. working with your devices. Um, in very close future, I think even we might not authenticate you anymore, just know you are who you are because we're nice. con yeah, continuously learning about you while you're working with the system. Very cool, okay. And now in the event that a user's device is stolen, how do you maintain that security still? That is the good point about the smartphones that we are leveraging to do biometrics authentication. Um, so everybody almost every moment checking their phone. So True. as soon as Fair you enough. lose it, you can report it. Um, and good point about the biometrics information is even though we are like 100% make it secure, uh, securely stored on the phone and, mm -hmm. and encrypted everything, there, but if you want, you can remotely nuke all the information there. And uh -huh. you can, less than 10 seconds, you can register a new phone and do your biometrics there, train the system, and then use that afterwards. So you don't Wonderful. lose anything. Yeah. That's great. Okay. And now, how do you secure IoT devices differently? So, um, IoT, like people were like, uh, saying that it's not risky because they are not connected, but we know that like one of the biggest and largest attacks that um, happened against and took down two major DNS services mm -hmm. in U.S. Um, was based on like IoT devices that has been hacked all around the globe. Yep. Um, and the, the biggest, largest DDoS attacks happened afterward. Um, so the cybersecurity is a major thing for IoT and um, connected devices. Um, but at the same time, they don't have like good user interface. So for instance, if you want to enter a like, complex password for mm -hmm. your Nest thermostat or your uh, smart TV, mm. it's like a very painful process for users. So we see a huge opportunity for no password to provide a easy to use solution yet secure for end users to interact with their IoT devices. Okay. And now I wanted to ask you about the behavioral and continuous authentication layer, specifically how you monitor actions on the devices, like mouse movements or phone handling. How does that all work exactly? So we look at it as a continuous authentication, not as a main factor, because at the beginning we don't know a lot about you. True. The more we learn about you, the better we can authenticate you. So, and then we look at it as a continuous authentication. It means that you authenticate yourself and for instance, you authenticate yourself and you leave your phone on your desk mm -hmm. unattended and you go for lunch and your coworker wants to use it. Then we detect that and we try to ask for further authentication. Like if you already authenticated fingerprint, fingerprint mm -hmm. we might ask you to do face authentication on top of it. Okay. So you just prove yourself. But um, we believe that 
down the road, you might replace even the biometric authentication with behavioral because all the phones, um, right now your phone in your pocket has like five to 20 sensors that constantly collecting data about you. We can use those information in a good way, also mm -hmm. in a bad way, yeah. <laughs> uh, but in a good way that we can um, help our system to authenticate you so you don't need to um, do the, like, pa type any passwords or passcodes anymore. That's very cool. It seems like the behavioral are almost as unique as a fingerprint yeah. in their actions. Sure. Very cool. And uh, are there any last things that you'd like to highlight about the company? Yeah, sure. So we are um, providing this service mainly for enterprises, mm -hmm. but we are going to launch a free, absolutely free service with no advertisement for end users. So really? you can use it once and forget all of your password forever. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so you can go and sign up at no password. When does that come out free. so I can now? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next quarter. That's amazing. Um, but you can sign up right now at nopassword.com for free. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sitting down and explaining all of this to me today. Right. I really appreciate it. Nice. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's all the time we have for today, so be sure to tune in next time for another episode of Access Point. Also, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook so you don't miss out on any of the latest cybersecurity news. This episode is brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on HackerArsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.